The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. Eric's Family Barbecue has arrived and is simply the best barbecue in Arizona. Come satisfy your taste buds with meats that are smoked over mesquite wooden sides that are made with fresh ingredients and tons of love. They have the best juiciest brisket, pulled pork, rib sausage, turkey, or everyone's favorite, the Pitmaster Sampler that includes all the meat and four sides. Mac and cheese, potato salad, coleslaw, corn, or beans. Yum. And for dessert, try some creamy banana pudding. Amazing. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be sorry. Dine in or take it to go. Go to Eric's Family Barbecue bbq.com for more info there's pearl jam right there 30th anniversary of that thing popping up here t91 10 came out how about that eat on that for a little bit my god we're all dying of old age got them talking about arthritis brady's collecting sosh <laughs> <laughs> It's all nasty. Uh, all right, it's time for the fireside chats. That means you guys get your chance to talk on our show. And in the meantime, you got eight more minutes to type in the word buttes to try to win a thousand bucks in our six K a day contest. The one you guys broke, and we can't thank you enough for doing so. You busted it. The suits changed it. Now it's ours. Uh, one thousand bucks. Who was the person? He told me. I forgot the name of the seven o'clock winner. We'll get them both out there. Eight o'clock, Buttes. You got seven more minutes. That's what we're looking at. Seven more minutes. Nine seven nine three six Buttes. Every time you drive by, you say butts, but it isn't. Meet me at the butts. They have a big sign up on the <laughs> driving down the I ten. Look at that, the butts. Pull over. Most people pull over. Let's get in the butts. I'm gonna put it in the butts parking lot. Uh, all right, who do we have first? There, right, we got Aaron. Aaron, are you there? Aaron. Yep, I'm here. All right, Aaron. How are you, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing quite well. You got plans for the Labor Day weekend? I have no plans, and that's better than any plan I can think exactly. of. Exactly. Nothing to do is the best vacation you can have. All right, talk to us. What do you got? All right, so this is a story happened probably about four years ago. I'm, I'm fairly certain that my ex-girlfriend, who's also my best friend, we're on good terms, but she, that won't she has a tendency to ruin everything. Right. That's why she's right. the ex. And I, I'm fairly certain she killed the bassist for my favorite band. <laughs> okay, tell us. Wow. <laughs> Who's the band? All right, have, have you guys ever heard of uh, Adrenaline Mob? Yeah. I have not. Well, yeah. Okay. But he, how did well, she do uh, it? Let, let me get into that. I got a, got a little build up for you. Oh, hurry up. All right, so I, I bought tickets to the show. Try to get some friends to go with me. I'd like three people bail on me. It was like a Sunday or a Monday night, something you know, not super convenient. Okay. So I ended up taking her with me. Right. We go to the show. She ended up getting trashed before we even got there because we brought a flask to pregame, oh, save on drinks. Crushed her. She drank the whole thing on the way there. Okay. So she was gone. So we go to the show, and the band comes on. Halfway through the show, their bassist takes his shirt off and he's just ripped. Right. So she's just staring at him the whole time and they keep making eye contact and stuff. Well, after the show, they come down, they're hanging out, you know, doing autographs, stuff like that, meet and greets. And he was just, he was all over. Right. You know, he was uh, telling her to follow him on Facebook, stuff like that, so they can talk. Okay. I'm fairly certain he wanted her to wait around. Okay. Hurry uh, up. She, you got to hurry she up. She was so trash. She didn't even recognize that. Okay. So yeah. they uh, they start texting. You know, it gets, gets a little dirty. He's sending some D-ticks, stuff like that. Nice. It, it was it was a big joke at work, you know. Sure. Like, I, I, I didn't know. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Hurry up. <laughs> okay. Okay. So they're talking, and then all of a sudden, I want to say it's like the following Friday. She calls me. She's like, hey. Google Adrenaline Mob right now. And so I do it, and I'm thinking, like, oh, man, they're coming back to town. This is exciting. Right. Adrenaline Mob in tragic accident, one dead. It's him. It's him. <laughs> they, uh, they, they blew out a tire on the bus, and they pulled over on the side of the road, 
and a semi veered off the road and just slammed into it. Is your girlfriend driving the semi? No. Did then she's not his, responsible for Did they for get this. his phone and the yeah. last thing he sent was another D-pick? Yeah, a dick pic. From, was he sending no, a dick no, pic? Yeah, as the, the, uh, yeah, was he trying to prop the truck up with a dick? <laughs> you know, I, I don't know that part exactly. Yeah, he All wouldn't right. be in the adrenaline. The last be a movie <laughs> that's, true, that's true. That's true. Was, <laughs> she asked him, how rough do you like it? Oh. And that was that was minutes before the accident. Not Apparently, that rough, actually. A little too rough. <laughs> a little too rough with the truck. <laughs> I'll show you how rough right. I like it. I'll take one from a Peterbilt. All right. Well, there you go. She wasn't responsible for his death, but she definitely was on board. I, I think she jinxed it. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. And you broke up with her shortly thereafter, or were you already broken up? Oh, no. We, we, we were broken up for a couple years. Oh, so she that. boned this guy. No, no, they were they were planning it. He was wanting to fly her out to New York and stuff like that. Adrenaline Mob's got that kind of dough? Well, he needed to play a couple around? of shows before it got her. Okay, yeah, that's true. Save <laughs> yeah. some money. Right. One more show and I'll be able to get a, a coach ticket for you in spirit. <laughs> Meet you in Rockford, Illinois. All right, well, there yeah, you go. He may I, or may not have been engaged, so maybe he was going to use her money. Yeah, somebody just texted in because what we do in the shadows is back. He said, someone hang up on Colin Robinson. <laughs> You do still you tell stories like uh, if Brady had good diction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was I like the ending of the Peterbilt. There, there, there's a lot more stuff to include. But oh, yeah, I'm, I haven't got time. I was afraid to go there. That was good. Thank you for killing adrenaline, mob. Bye. All right, I can't go on. Come on, don't bore us. Get to the chorus. What are you writing this uh, opus for? What are you fish of storytelling? At first, I thought he was multitasking, yeah. like oh. he's talking to someone else. And it sounded like he was texting. swimming. Yeah, sending D pics to someone as he's telling the story. You're gonna have to forgive me. I'm doing some uh, uh, overhead skull crushers while I do. I'm gonna do a little working out. Focus on the story, man. <sighs> exactly. <laughs> Jeremy says, "Does this guy realize the show's only like four and a half hours?" I, no, he doesn't. All right, go ahead. Who's next? All right, uh, pick this it is, up. Let's hope it's better, Derek. It can't be slower, uh, Derek. Are you there? Yeah. How's it going? Oh, great. <laughs> Hi, Derek. <laughs> Perfect follow-up. You made the other guy sound like electricity. Go ahead, Derek. Uh, I was just calling in. I, I love seeing all these businesses doing stuff for the troops the last couple of weeks, but um, I'd like to challenge some of these businesses to keep leaving tables open for fallen troops. I don't know you know, whether they want to do it permanently or – You mean like they, they won't happen. seat a table in their whole restaurant even if it's full for uh, for in honor yeah, of fallen like troops? Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of social – yeah, I've been seeing a lot of social media or even just being at different businesses the last week or two that have left empty seats for the troops. Yeah, I think that's nice, but you know what would happen? And, Brady, you can back me up on this. When your restaurant's full and people are waiting for a table and they see an empty one, they won't stop bitching at why it's empty. You can double the amount of losing customers well, you, yeah, by doing yeah, that yeah, because people, they might not ever come back. Here's them. the thing. It's a beautiful idea. The general public's a bunch of dicks. And if they're not getting, and they see an open table, and you're like, no, that's, we leave that open for the fall trips. Like, oh, pff, fine. And then they'll just go somewhere else. So, yeah, you're going to lose yeah. cash, which in a way you'd be willing to do, but nobody who runs a business wants people to walk out. Yeah. I'm with you. I think it's yeah, a great sure. thing. I think the thing we should do is always think of the, the fallen troops and things like that. But if you see a guy uh, who's uh, in his gear, buy his dinner. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, agree. I, I, I always try to do that at uh, reasonable places. I don't want people wandering in and camouflage over at the Ocean 44. I'm not going to go nuts. <laughs> but if I see it like, you know, McDonald's <laughs> or, uh, you know, whatever, I'm like, get that guy for, for me because he's wearing all camo. Now, there's been a time or two where it's just been an insane person in camouflage. But I've asked him, like, thanks for your service. And, like, it means everything to me. And then I just buy his dinner. That's, that's the best thing you can yeah, do for cool a seeing people. Yeah. yeah, I like seeing people be more patriotic. So, like, Are you a veteran? That. No, I'm not. No, okay. You're just a fan. Yeah, we all should yeah, be. Nothing wrong with that. Absolutely, we all should be. Nice job. That's actually a really nice sentiment, but I just know from having worked in restaurants, the idiots who see open tables won't stop being jerks about it. And it's just it's too hard to do. So you, you, you'd end up just seating the table to shut someone up, and then now you're a jerk for that. You can't win as the and restaurant owner. That's yeah. it for uh, people that are doing it. Maybe you're yeah. just doing a two-top. That's yeah. all you're doing? Well, it's, give Brady credit mm-hmm. because his restaurant for the last year, all the tables were dedicated to Fallen Truth. Yes. <laughs> Every one of them was empty. <laughs> it was amazing. All right. Thank you, sir. We'll talk to you later. Nice job. That was a nice sentiment. A little slow. We need somebody with some juice on the board here. Get somebody. Get some Brady's Adderall in some of these. No people. kidding. All right. Let's, let's try Michael. Maybe he is. Michael, are you there? Hey, Sugar Nips, how you doing? <laughs> Sugar Nips, how you doing, Sugar Nips? Everything good? 
Hey, good, good. How about you? How's hey, you it going, know, guys? I'm doing all right. You're going to the meeting tonight over at Brett's Italian American Club? <laughs> this Friday, Friday. No, no. I actually got a responsibilities with a girlfriend. We're going up to Jerome on Saturday. Oh, oh, enjoy that. Yeah. Right, have fun. All right, go ahead. What do you got for us? Okay, so I got to know, obviously, as you guys were little little tykes running up, you didn't want to be disc jockeys. Maybe you did. But I'm curious on what you wanted to be whenever you were little. And how'd you get here? What what went totally wrong okay. or completely <laughs> right for you all to be sitting there? <laughs> Brett, let's start with you. I don't know your story. What did I want to be? What did you want to be? Like, let's say junior high, high school, you're like, this is what I'm aiming at. Actually, this. No kidding. Yeah, I always Couldn't wanted to be. This. No, seriously. Overnight it, it, guy. Not an overnight guy. Yeah, believe me, but but I mean, as far as like you know, you hear the guys on the radio and meeting all the bands and all that kind of yeah. stuff. So like, literally, this is in this junior high it. and high school. This you're was living it. your dream. Absolutely, hundred oh, percent. I know it's not, it sounds bar. it sounds easy and stupid, but it's it true. All right, Brady. Early on, yeah, I wanted to be a trash man driving the oh, car. That's around. true. He loved trash. But trash. then after that, I I wanted to be involved in the entertainment business somehow. And what was your first thought of that? Like, what was your, like, this is what I think I'm going to do. I, that was my problem. I didn't know what angle. So in college, I majored in radio, television, communications, sure. then took it from there. Yeah. So the intention was to just be entertaining. Yep. Somehow. somehow. Yeah. Whether if you could turn it like into a, a career. Would or... you ever have considered balloon animals or magic? No. Okay. So it's not everything. You yeah, did yeah. have You had narrowed it down. Yeah. I had zero idea what i wanted it was always pie in the sky baseball player i had that yeah. up until i was way too late in life and i didn't i wasn't good enough to do any of it but i had that thought that maybe so, someday, you just took day day. so i ended up bartending and then i met an old bartender and i saw him at two in the morning and i said uh i said man two in the morning your life stinks and he goes you're staring your future in your face and i'm like what and he goes this is your life and i'm like oh my god he's right and then another guy told me that i I was always, goes, you got one of those voices for radio, you should try that. And I went to a radio school, a trade school. I almost went to that, too. I, I did. And I realized on, like, day two, oh, it's about kicking doors down. It has nothing to do with this. So you just have to go start being ambitious. So I kind of got a little ambition and started to ask for stuff and ended up finding out that anybody can get a job in radio. All you have to do is show up. <laughs> and, then, and then being on the air is different. But if you want to get – honestly, if you want a job in radio – and you're willing to suck for a while. I mean, like Jeremy's doing it. And you go in and you just go, uh, what do you need me to do? And like, I need you to set up tables and tents and stuff like that for a couple months. If you're a decent person, even people who don't show up all the time stay. Yeah. We got people who like occasionally just don't even show up for work and they don't get fired. So That's how I started. I mean, I started handing out bumper stickers. I interned Ugh. for free and then did, drove the van around doing all that stupid stuff. And then the failure began, and it hasn't ended yep. since. So thank you for asking. Stick Take with what you get at. A 20-year anniversary <laughs> of, of us going, I don't know. I was a D student who made jokes in school. People said I'd be good at this, so I tried it. Anyway, what do you do for a living? <laughs> what, what's your job? Right now, I am currently outside of a pool that I just got done cleaning. I got about 10 more, so I just want to thank you guys. You guys Hold on. get through the day. Thank you, but that, that couldn't have been your dream. What did you want to do? Well, uh, to be honest with you, I want to do private security. You know, when you're walking around, you're wearing, like, the suit and tie, and someone comes up, and you decide, you know, like, kick their butt. I wanted to do that. I wanted to be, like, the silent, cool type. What happened? <laughs> well, to be honest with you, money cleaning pools is really good as yeah. long as you get with the right company. Um, and uh, I, I was doing private security for a while in Tempe and Phoenix, and I just moved up to this. Me and my girlfriend are doing this, and there you go. it's all about planning the future. So. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Getting is your chlorine money still really expensive? <laughs> oh yeah. See, we have yeah, to get jacked all over right the now. Time. Brady is so into the money thing. <laughs> can you get Brady a deal on chlorine? <laughs> no, is what he's asking. No. Yeah. How about Nobody the- can. That's what you were up for, though. No, I get a discount. If he no, no I just need a juicy biscuit. I will give him as much chlorine as he See? wants. He's ready to barter, Brady. Your world of bartering Still isn't sauce dead left. Yet. You got any juice? I do. He's got some expired, yeah, but no, I, I'm just stuff. asking that because I know just the uh, I know cleaning I know service you. I have. I know you well enough to know that that was what's a, happened. That the, was an yeah, offer. Yeah, so yeah. We got to hang up on this guy. But Brady's going to trade cards. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. There you go. See. All right, one more try. Uh, let's try Janie. Uh, Scott Haynes says, Brady told me he wanted to be Mayor McCheese but ended up being Grimace. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie is on the line? Janie. Janie. Janie, are you there? Yes, I am. Good morning. Hi, Janie. How are you? Very fine. Is that a dog? I am. Well, it's two of them, and we're on our way to get our rattlesnake shots. 
And my question is, how did you end up uh, with your uh, pack of dogs, and how do you keep order with that, man? Well, i, I got to ask you about that rattlesnake shot. For the dogs, have they been bitten? No, they haven't. Supposedly, they have a vaccine. This is my first experience with it, so we're going to give it a shot. To put it in I the dogs? I didn't even know it existed. So yeah, they're, they're... They, um, yeah, they give them a vaccine. I have to come back for a booster in two weeks, but I'm going to find out more about it. They told me it was on my paw plan. I didn't even know it was a thing. I don't know it's a thing either. Are you... I know there is rattlesnake training, and then yeah. obviously you live somewhere where you're coming across some rattlers in the backyard, a desert area. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm... Uh... I'm outside of uh, Maricopa, oh, wow. and uh, I uh, have a acreage there, and uh, I'm fond of calling my pack of dogs Mastiff Nation. All right. Uh, I'm now up to five, and uh, my uh, husband accuses me of turning our living room into a kennel. It is. But I know other people have uh, many dogs, and I'm uh, curious yeah. to hear uh, how you got all of yours and uh, yeah. what you do to keep the order. Uh, well, I've always had dogs. As a kid, I grew up with tons of dogs, so it just kind of carried over into my adult world. So we had a lot of dogs when I was younger. But not not a, at once. You oh, always yeah. have one. You no, we had, I think we had five at once. Uh, oh, really? Most, yeah, we, 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 we collected. We had, For a while, it was one or two. I topped it. Oh, you know. I topped it when I got to seven. Yeah. When I knew I had seven, I'm like, boy, we're getting uh, we're starting to overload a little. <laughs> but yeah, uh, five right now. And I've just always had a house full of dogs because I prefer them to humans. And uh, they're just better. This is an odd fireside chat today. Everybody's asking questions like yeah. it's some sort of Q&A interview, like we're dying. But, you know, the answer, a little bit, you have separate quarters for the dogs. Oh, yeah, the they, have their own, they have their own house in the house. They have, like, their own casita. So they, they stay in the house with us when we're in it, but at bedtime they go, they go to their house. And there you go. Which is uh, the – well, their house is 1,000 square foot. Yeah, I mean, it's, we're, we're loaded. It's amazing. It's a starter house. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's a little – It's a little. look, I, it's a fixer-upper if you ask me. Full, yeah. Oh, there's full yeah. AC. They got a fridge and a chef and all that, like a normal person would have. Two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so there you go. Well, th- thanks for asking. It's a strange thing. Well, it sounds like they have you uh, well-trained, and uh, i am uh, got high hopes for the uh, rattlesnake vaccine. Me too. Today. Keep me, yeah, email me about that. I don't know anything about it. I will uh, enlighten you as I find out. All Thank right. you. Thank you. We'll talk to you later. There you go. Janie. Vincent a, Vincent emailed in uh, about the first guy with his girlfriend killing the guy from Adrenaline Mob. Yeah. It says, cuck best friend. That guy claimed his ex-girlfriend, his ex-best friend killed someone. He's jealous that she was banging someone yeah. that wasn't him. He should have been in that bus. <laughs> <laughs> that should have been you. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how he claims that. But pretty cool that the Adrenaline Mob dude was sending D pics to that chick. No kidding. She must have been smoking for him to just notice on stage and then start firing off shots of the helmet. I got to find my D off. Yeah, I got to find my D to that lady right there in the front row. You like pictures of dicks? <laughs> sure, who doesn't? I don't know everybody I've ever sent them to. Uh, well, there you go. Fireside chats. Very strange <sighs> group. Yeah, I'm with you, Brett. Sometimes they're swinging a miss. <laughs> hey, oh, we got some people swing. ask questions. Hey, Her delivery hey. was like a, uh, one of the Kennedy members. Uh, uh, I uh, yeah. want uh, to uh, ask you a uh, question about a uh, t- certain thing that's been uh, on my mind. I'll get to the question. <laughs> Nick just said that this lady sounds like JFK. He yeah. just messaged yeah. him. <laughs> she uh, has a uh, vaccine for the... Uh, it's like she was going up a roller coaster and about to go over the top. Anyway. Bobby. Sirhan Sirhan is out, and that's in honor of him. Get a Sirhan Sirhan vaccine today. Uh, it's 8.50. Those are your fireside chats. Where was Thunderhorse on that one? Uh, he, as a matter of fact, he texted in and or I mean, emailed me saying he couldn't make it in this week because he's got adulting Jeez. to do. But I'll have to – I'll read you the email off there. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's, <laughs> even for me, right. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> uh, there you go. That is your fireside chats. Uh, Entertainment Drill coming up in moments. It's 98. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What the hell? 98. I'm not cool with this at all. K-U-P-D. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com.